Howdy. For this short tutorial, I wanted to look at splines in Unreal, uh, and more specifically looking at just uh, what kind of options we have as far as information we can get from them. Uh, because I've seen a lot of tutorials out there uh, that will go through specific examples using splines, but not all of the, not a lot of them touch on um, multiple ways that we can actually use splines and uh, get data from splines. So. I'm going to add myself a new blueprint class here, just a generic actor, um, and I will make this, I'll uh, just name this uh, spline uh, BP. Pop inside there. I'm just going to gonna dock this over here so it's easy to go back and forth. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add in a spline component. Note I'm not adding in a spline mesh component, specifically under utility spline component. When I do that, you will notice that we actually do get uh, a spline here in our viewport. Uh, and so that we can see everything without having to hit play and such when we're kind of fiddling with it uh, in the uh, the viewport, the level viewport, uh, I'm going to do everything here in the construction script. So first, I'm gonna, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out from the spline, uh, I'm going to drag out a reference to it, and I'm going to drag out from here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in location. And actually I'm going to type in get location. And you'll notice we have a couple options here under spline. Uh, get location at time, get location at spline point, and get location at distance along spline. We also have something called get location and tangent at spline point, and we'll talk about this after we're done talking about uh, the three generic uh, methods at which we can reference data along the spline, that being time, points, and distance. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get location at a spline point, and I'm going to use this data, and so we can visualize this uh, in the construction script. I'm going to add in a add static mesh component node, and I'm going to set the static mesh to a one meter cube. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to expand this uh, pin structure. I'm just going to plug this into the relative transform location, then I'm going to hit compile. And now if I drag this into the world, we will see that uh, we have a we have our blueprint spawning a generic uh, one meter cube uh, right at uh, point zero, which is currently where it's set. Um, before we start fiddling with uh, this, let's take a look at just generic controls real quick of how to control uh, splines themselves in this viewport. Um, as you can see right now, I'm kind of dragging around and I'm dragging up and down uh, and I'm moving the entire object around. If I want to start controlling individual points, what I can do is I can click on an individual point and I know it's selected once I have uh, these two little red line things here. And these are actually the tangent indicators. This is kind of indicating which direction the tangent's going. So I click on that farther one, uh, you'll see that I have this forward tangent and the backward tangent is kind of like following the line. Uh, and I can drag this around. I can kind of move the line around. I can move that point around now. If I, want to add, if I want to add another point, all I have to do is hold down the Alt key and then drag out, and now I have a new point that I can kind of control. And I can kind of keep doing this, you know, as much as I see fit uh, to create a path using this uh, this spline tool here. If we want to add points inside of these, uh, we can just click on one of these points, and you'll see this little red region. This is the uh, this indicates the after this point, what is like, where is the path after this point selected. And so if I hold down Alt and drag, uh, I will add a point after the one I had selected. And so it'll kind of, you can see where it's going to end up being connected to then the path here. Okay. And we can also rotate the points just like we do, you know, with an object. Uh, this might be a better one to show an example on. You can kind of see, I can kind of control how it's approaching it. And if I scale it, I can scale. Um, think of it as a Bezier curve. I can scale those tangent, uh, uh, the magnitudes, as to how strongly it's actually going to approach these points. And so if I want, I can select these, and I can get a fairly like straightforward, just straight point to point to point path or I can use these and I can uh, I can round these out so that I get a much more you know a much smoother kind of transition between the points much rounder transition 
So going back to the blueprint now, um, let's see if I let me see if I can. No, let's do this way. We'll just add ourselves a, a quick variable here. We can control this, and then we can see what's going to happen in the blueprint. So I'm going to add myself a variable here. I'm just going to call this uh, point control. I'm going to make it an integer. I'm just going to connect it to this point index, and I'll hit compile. I also need to make this instance editable so that we can actually see it. We'll compile one more time. And now I have over here on this screen, I actually have a, uh, a point control index which I can control and so we can see right now we're at point zero for where we're getting our location data. If I make this value of one, I am now positioned at point one and then point two. And we can kind of see that that you know, if you're going to get data from or location data or you know eventually tangent data from a point, uh, you specifically will reference those points themselves. So if I have this here and then I move this point around, the box goes with it. The second way we can do it is we can get a distance. So let's delete this, and I will actually grab myself a distance along spline mode. Get location at distance along spline. I will wire this in and I will change this to a float. That's fine. So we can control it in the level viewport. And now, you, you notice something's really happening right now. That's because it's going in, so it's going in actual distance values as Unreal notices it. So remember that uh, the one meter cube is actually 100 um, Unreal units because a single Unreal unit is one centimeter. So a distance unit is one centimeter. So this is actually giving physical distance points. So if I go to you know, 100, that's about there. I can keep going. And once I hit the end of the spline, it will actually you know, end. Um, we can also change this and we can make this a little bit more interesting and loop it. Um, we can go back into our spline blueprint and we can close the loop using this button here and now you'll notice that uh, the spline will actually loop back to the first point no matter how many points I have but you'll also notice that I can I can't really go start looping magically through it I have from zero distance to whatever the maximum transition distance is and then it stops and when we look at time it's going to be the same way But this is the second way you can kind of get data along a spline. You notice this is much a much smoother kind of passage through our um, our spline itself, um, and that's just basically be by using the distance along it. So that's useful if you want, if you know the distance. But what if you aren't necessarily sure about the distance? Because if I scale my entire object up here. See if I put it somewhere farther along here and I start scaling it up. You'll notice that it starts going back along the track because the 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 spline is actually taking up more space. So what if I wanted to be able to you know have this have have this position be consistent regardless of scaling? Well, in that case, I need to use time, um, and we'll do that. Time is basically something that we can set and we can grab because all splines have a duration. Um, you'll notice here under spline, under the details, you have duration. We can actually set this in seconds to what kind of duration we want the spline to exist uh, as far as how we reference it. So if I set this, for example, for, I'll leave it at one second here, and we'll take a look at this. So I'm going to grab out of here a get location at time. I'll plug my point control in again, and I'll plug that back into relative transform, and I need to change this back to zero. So let's say if I, you know, I put this. I mean, this initially will look very similar. So right now it's going to go from zero to one, and then at one it'll have completed the path. 
if our duration was, you know, if I leave this at one and our, we change it our duration uh, for our spline to say 10 seconds, you'll see that suddenly our our cube is much earlier on in the path. And I like so five seconds is halfway along that path. 10 seconds is completed. But this means that you know if I want this this to be here, if I scale my entire object because the time isn't changing, you'll notice that our cube is no longer leaving. However, you will notice that our cube is scaling with the object because this is an object level. Um, if you don't want it to scale, you need uh, this. This in this particular example is because we're using an added static mesh component. If we didn't want it to scale, we'd have to uh, add it a different way. That's kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial. All right, so that that that's that's shown us kind of the the three different uh, methods of getting data out of here. Uh, last thing I want to take a look at you guys uh, look look at with you guys is um, a, the tangent information. So you know you'll notice if I typed in get location and tangent at spline point, um, this showed up. We can also type in just get tangent, and we will also get at time, at spline point, or at distance. Um, and so we can get all of these. And what's what's going to happen here is it's going to give us a forward vector. So if I grab myself, for example, uh, at time, and we will give ourselves. See, is there a better shape we can give ourselves? But let's uh, let's do it this way. Let's uh, let's add in. We're gonna we're gonna visualize what's going on here by adding in the tangent to the relative transform location because this is gonna give us a, a position, and then we can add in uh, a vec because this will give us direction. We can we can multiply this uh, by an integer, maybe ten. And we can add these two, and then this should this should offset our object along the tangent. And make sure I grab that too. Now, if I bring this back to zero. That might have been a little bit too much as far as it de adding to it. Yeah, let's just let's decrease this down to like two. And so you'll notice um, if I put this to zero, uh, our unit vector at point zero will be uh, have a tangent pointing towards our object. Uh, it's not a unit vector. Uh, you can see that it's kind of twice the distance of that red line. And so if I increase this now, let's say point 0.2. See, where can I get to point 0.2 here? So doing this at time is a little tricky. But um, actually, let's, say, let's change this to... Uh, get location at point that way it's a little bit clearer we're not having to worry about trying to to ballpark change that back to an integer and plug everything back in File. Okay. So now point one, point sorry, point zero. If I look at point one and I change this to one, it's again ahead of it. Change this to two. You look at point two, and you'll notice that um, so you'll notice that um, what we have here is so it's not a unit vector. Um, what we have here is the point has been scaled. So it's going to scale it based off of here. If I change this to back to one, 
you'll see then that it actually centers it at the end of whatever this tangent is. So this is the actual um, vector it's showing here for our tangent, our forward vector, and our and our. It also gives us technically it shows us the backward vector of what's what's behind us. But if I shrink this down, you'll kind of see that this ends up getting closer and closer. And so these later points will all exist on it until we get back to you know point five, where you'll start seeing again that it puts it based on that tangent forward distance. Um, and this is really useful if you have, for example, like a, like a facing. If you if you have like an object that's pathing along a uh, a spline path and you need it to always face forward, uh, you can always use this. This is a for get forward. You know, this is the forward vector here. You can do that really easily just by typing in normalize, and it will normalize the vector for you. So that is my tutorial introduction to splines. Hopefully you find that helpful.